Hey there, this is Grey Delisle. I played Daphne on Scooby-Doo, Jeepers, and Azula on Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Mandy on The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, and Sam on Danny Phantom, and Emily Elizabeth on Clifford the Big Red Dog, and you're with Comics Online. This is a rare occasion where we're not talking about a specific show. We get to talk about your career and all the oh, wonderful things you have going on. Thank so, you. so excited. excited. Uh, so let's let's talk about Azula. Uh, I got wow. a very nice message from Azula uh, <laughs> congratulating me on my, my recent promotion. So thank yes, you. Yes, yes, I was. So, that was very. You have nice coworkers. I didn't have nice coworkers. Everybody betrayed my trust. So, oh well. It's a pity when you can't trust those closest to you. But you did successfully take over Bossing Say at 14. I did. So, so. I'm an overachiever. What can I say? So last year at Fan Expo, we started a, a new tradition, which was story time with Comics Online. We did okay. something a little bit different. I love to hear about life and more so just pieces outside of the day to day. I know yeah. music is very important to yes. you. Yeah. Uh, you have a wonderful uh, you know, set of musicians that you work with. I'd love to start there. It just yeah. what what are you working on right now from a musical perspective? Oh my gosh! Well, the the guy who does all the music for SpongeBob is a huge producer, and he's produced the Ramones and Jerry Lee Lewis and the Beach Boys and all kinds of things. And I just made two records with him over that are going to be out next year. But I'm also putting out a double record next month. And I'm making a record with John Carter from uh, John, Johnny Cash's son and June Carter's son. And um, I just got all kinds of things. I was actually at a songwriting thing last night with Rodney Crowell. I don't know if you know who Rodney Crowell is, but he's a, an incredible songwriter and performer. And um, we wrote songs, and I performed my original songs, and it was really fun. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And then I went down from the mountain, got straight to LAX, and went straight to Chicago. So I'm a little sweaty. Yeah, you're here. <laughs> Music-wise, also, uh, I went back through a little bit of your repertoire. Uh, Batman, the Music Meister, Brave I and the Bold. I know, I know. They um, really want to take that off my Spotify because they want to. And they're, they're like, there's too many cartoons, and, and I go, no, people love that. that I have to keep incredible. them together. Yeah. But if you follow me on Spotify and you come see me at the show, I have special stickers that my friend who does the animation for SpongeBob designed. It's me camping. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so come by and get a free sticker if you follow me on Spotify. So you have a very lengthy uh, career with, with amazing characters you've gotten to portray. Mm -hmm. Which is the one that you feel is the most underrated, or the one you don't get to talk about the most that you, you really love? Well, I, I do Invincible. I, I play um, Shrinking Ray and Monster Girl and Invincible. And the thing is, it's not on my poster or down here. <laughs> so nobody knows that I, and so I have it on my table and people go, wait a minute. You're Monster Girl, and I'm like, and Shrinking Ray, and they're like, what? And it's just, it always surprises me. So I need to add her, them to my poster. Cause we were just with Robert Kirkman a couple weeks ago at oh, Comic Con. I so. love him. What a great, so wonderful Invincible mind. So Invincible has been an incredible show. I know. Um, and of course, multiple seasons uh, got picked yes, up. So I'm congratulations. So happy about that. Uh, that and The Simpsons is going to keep me going for the rest of my life. Okay, you beat me to it. So <laughs> we're just going to go down the line. You get to be Martin Prince now, I'm and Martin Sherry and Prince Terry. And Sherry and Terry, and Uter. And Uter. Yes, it's so wonderful. Yeah, so You get to play, you know, the Simpsons obviously have had a, a three decades of, of history. Yes. How does it feel stepping into that world in particular? Well, I love Rusi Taylor so much. She was a mentor of mine and a great friend. So it's bittersweet to take take the reins after she passed. But I also feel her with me all the time as I feel Mary Kay with me all the time when I do Daphne. It's been 26 years since we lost Mary Kay, and but I, she's with me all the time, so it's almost a little, you know, I feel my little red-haired angel on my shoulder and my little Rusi. <laughs> what was the, the time that you knew that this is when you wanted to pursue the rest of your life as far as your career and, and do this professionally? Well, I was a very strange little kid, and I did voices all the time. I was hyperactive, and I was... I got in trouble a lot, and I couldn't concentrate. I got ADHD, and um, so I kind of took all my weaknesses and made a superpower out of it, because I just had no idea this was an actual job you could have. I was just being weird, and then I just made weirdness work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's worked pretty well. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's just an incredible catalog of characters, but outside of work, 
what else do you, you know, I know mu music is a big part. Uh, you know, your son is very much into art and yeah. loving seeing uh, Texas oh, yeah. artwork. But what else do you like to do outside of this world? Because I think it's something we don't get to showcase as much anymore. You know, everything's always about the, the sound bite, the clip. Oh, yeah. But what, what are your passions outside of music? I love stand-up comedy. I've been doing stand-up comedy since I was in high school. And that's actually how I got into voiceover. I was at the comedy store and uh, Mitzi Shore, Polly Shore's mom, uh, she said, hey, you do great characters, but you need to write better jokes. So you should go do some voiceover while you're writing your jokes. And it was amazing because in Dallas, at Fan Expo Dallas, I was backstage with Polly Shore and I was like, oh, I don't want to bother him. I don't want to. And then I said, I just have to tell you, your mom, I have this career in voiceover 30 years and your mom's the reason why I'm doing what I do because she told me to, and he's like, oh, wow. He's like, it's my mom's birthday today. And, and, and she's passed, but I thought it was like a really neat, like little cosmic thing, you know, so. So uh, your dad, uh, Fire Lord Ozai, is here yes, as he well. Is. Yes, he is, and he's also the Joker to my Catwoman. Yes. Meow. Uh, and also the, uh, you know, the Luke Skywalker to my Asajj Ventress. I love the, the six degrees of separation that we have with all these events. Yeah. But I'd love to know, just as far as you know, you get to travel and do all these uh, amazing conventions. Mm -hmm. Who are your go-to's for hanging out with when you're going to do these amazing oh, trips? Oh gosh, well, I'm very good friends with Tom Kenny and and uh, his wife Jill Talley. And they're Chicago people, <laughs> but um, I well Jill is, but um, they're they're my pers close personal friends, you know. And I also love Richard Horvitz because I play Mandy on The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. And Richard and he and his wife, we go to dinner when we do these things. Um, and uh, Tara Strong and her big hot boyfriend, we go out. <laughs> Thank I, you for taking. Well, this was time such a pleasure. Us. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Come see me. Free hugs. Stay tuned for more coverage at Comics Online.